Hello, I'm Minister Detina Hearn. I'm pastor of Meditating Life Center Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're bringing you our next Bible study lesson. Today we'll be um, talking about a lesson, and you're going to find it very odd, but it's a lesson that's going to lead us to maybe a, a lesson or a series on on friendship. And you're going to say, why are you coming from it? You know, coming from there to talk about friendship, and I'll explain when we get there, but you need to get your Bible and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And if you missed any of these lessons, you can go to our Facebook pages, Minister Detina or Pastor Detina at the Meditating Life Center, or you can go and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Minister Detina. If you want to donate to the, to us or gift us, it's um, dollar sign Detina Heard, capital D, capital H on your cash app. Um, there's a slight review because we've been doing a long review Okay, remember now, we've been mostly talking about faith. So we started off with childlike faith, then we moved on to children of God, then we went to parables of the lost, talking about when someone's lost, like the lost coin, how people will really look for something they lost, and on up to the one that everybody's familiar with, or most people are familiar with, which is the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. What happens? What does God do when we're lost, when one of his is lost? And then we went on to the Holy Week lessons, we started with Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, which we had already referred to in the beginning with our childlike faith, because in there the children were cheering with everyone else, Hosanna, Hosanna, and the leaders were trying to shut down the children. And Jesus said, you better be like children and have that childlike faith, or she won't even see the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Then we moved on to the road to the resurrection. We talked about the resurrection and how Jesus kept warning and trying to console his disciples because he knew his time was short. He was about to go to the cross. We saw how the leaders plotted, how Jesus, Judas betrayed him. And we talked about how we would go through some of those things and uh, sh uh, it showed the tri triumph of Jesus on the cross, that he is not dead, that he is alive, that he lives. Amen. And then we moved on to say, now we will persevere. And all these things that we know and learned about God through his word, through our experiences, through Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit, we will persevere, we will endure, we will stand until the end. And then we moved on to, we got sent back to the parable of the sower. When we talked about perseverance, we went to the par um, parable of the sower. You know, the seeds and all the things that come along that get us off the path and how to stay on that path and keep on um, keeping on. And we went back and we revi revisited it again because we wanted to make it sure. You know, we feel like the Lord led us back there. We don't want to be a weed in the story, right? We don't want to fall away. We don't want to. So we looked again at what would cause people to fall away. Then we moved on to Mother's Day. We reviewed. Okay. And then after that, well, actually, when we, we did, when we said you don't want to be a weed, we did the parable of the sower. Excuse me. And then we went to Mother's Day. And then we went back to you. Uh, Revisit the sower one more time in Luke 8 because we were looking at all the things that Jesus did. And then we completed Luke 8 last week um, because we called it Even If They Forget. So I'm, you know, I'm briefly kind of giving you an idea of what these lessons were about, but you'd have to go back and look at them. And they are on our YouTube channel and our Facebook pages. And we, last week we were still in Luke 8, if I'm not mistaken. And we were talking about how no matter what Jesus did, people seem to forget. And we talked about sometimes no matter what you do for people, no matter how good you've been to them, look at what they do. We Even all of us, right? Even with God, it seems like sometimes we just totally forget how good he's been to us, what he's done for us, how he's brought us through, how he makes a way, how we're still standing. And that even when we die, we have something even greater to look forward to. Not that we kill ourselves or give up or, you know, want to die earlier or kill people or any crazy, you know, wrong, sinful things like that. But we know that when our time comes, unless Jesus comes back and takes us out of here, um, there's something greater for us because we finally get to see that God and that Savior uh, that we are worshiping and believing in. So that's what we talked about last week, that even if they forget, God did not forget. He does not forget what we do for him. And he's not unjust that he will reward us for the things that we have done for him on his behalf and for his people and that we continue to go, to do and that is scripture and so today we're going to move on and, and we're, like again we're going to go to first thessalonians 5 but it's going to lead at least today that's what i'm getting to we're going to move into a book about friendship when we finish first thessalonians 5 so if you'll get that i'll lead you in a word of prayer father god in the name of jesus we just thank you for another day that you have made god in spite of all that's going on we're rejoicing and we're glad 
of it because you promised us, Jesus, that we would always have joy and peace in you. And so, Lord, we always find that place of joy and peace in you because we have that confidence in you that we know that we're going to be okay, whether it's in this world or it's in the next, Whether no matter what circumstances are, no matter what evil tries to do, that good has already triumphed at the cross. And all we have to do is stand and do what we know to do and then find joy and peace in Jesus' name. And so we thank you, God, and we lift up anyone who's having that struggle, God, in any area where we're having that struggle, God, anything that's not like you, we give you permission to just remove it, take it out of us. Lord, help us to be like you, Jesus. We give you permission today, God. We stand firm, flat-footed, in our full armor, just worshiping you today, God, and lifting up people who are hurting in spirit. Lord, they're poor in spirit. They're poor in finances. They're poor in their mental health. They're poor in their physical health. They're poor in their emotional health, God. You are a healer. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we call on you to heal the brokenhearted, Lord. Jesus, you said you came to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, so heal them in spirit. Heal them in their emotions. Heal them in our physical bodies. Heal us in our, in our, uh, in, in the area of our lives, in our finances, God. Help us to be more wise stewards with what you already gave us, God. Lead and direct us, Holy Spirit. And for anyone who does not have the Holy Spirit, today is the day of salvation. Lord, we pray that they recognize that they are in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. And that they make that confession of faith today, that they know they need that forgiveness that you've offered, so that one day they will be with you. So, Lord, as this lesson goes forward, Lord, we just ask that you bless all those who are mourning and grieving, Lord, that you touch the hearts of those who plot to do evil, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help the Christian people, help the people who call, are called by your name to humble ourselves and pray, and seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways so you can heal our land, God. And then you'll get the glory, honor, and praise as we continue to teach and learn in your name and carry out your will until the day we see you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to 1 Thessalonians 5. And I'm going to read the commentary because it's kind of, I don't want it to be gloomy and I'm going to explain it a little. We're in the voice translation uh, today. So it might read a little different than the translation you have. But the commentary starts out saying, many people fear death. Perhaps it's the idea of the unknown that stirs the imagination. And death is the great enemy that stands before believers. But through Jesus' own death and resurrection, the power of death is broken. Paul uses the gentle image of the faithful being asleep as a new perspective on the finality of death. One minute you close your eyes to this world, the next you are celebrating with Jesus and experiencing the resurrection of the body. Those sleeping with will not even miss a moment. It will all happen in the blink of an eye. So a lot of things going on right now, you know, like, the, the things in Texas and not even just Texas because that's really a terrible tragedy that's being highlighted and it seems so unnecessary it shouldn't have even happened but it's happening all over the place that people are taking people's lives and, but as Christians we know things couldn't happen unless God allows them for us that you know and it's not it still makes it not right it still makes it wrong it still makes it tragic it still makes it sad but we have that we have a hope right that other people may not have, you know, that we've been mourning without any hope. And so we ask for Jesus' blessing, and we know that we all will die one day. If Jesus does not come back and get us before then, uh, we will pass away. These bodies wear out just like a car does, right? And and uh, so, <laughs> so <laughs> get older or sometimes diseases or, you know, they say it's appointed, you know, to every man a day to die and then the judgment. So the Bible tells us everybody has a day that's appointed to us to pass away. And so we must have that hope. And for anyone who does not know Jesus Christ, I, we beg of you, like Paul said, you know, be reconciled to God and, um, to know that you are a sinner in need of, of a Savior. That Savior is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose up on the third day with many, many, many witnesses to it. And, uh, and he's seated on the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for us. So when we mess up, he pleads our case before God, right? And God sees us through that blood of Jesus, and he forgives us from our sins, and he promises to cleanse us from that unrighteousness because it is God himself who gives us the will and to do, um, to be able to do his good pleasure by his Holy Spirit, okay? So we don't fear death. We don't yearn for death, but we don't fear it because we know it's only going to come when it's time or God allows it, and we know there's something greater for us. Um, right now, we work and we toil on behalf of Jesus, and we find that joy and that peace that he promised us as we mature 
in Jesus Christ and we are supportive of each other. That's why we're going to move from this into friendship at, at some point. It's going, I'm going to explain to you what God showed me about this having something to do with friendship. So who wants to read uh, starting at um, verse 1 on First Thessalonians chapter 5? Somebody can read. Now, brothers and sisters, you don't need further instruction from us or anyone else, for that matter, regarding how the seasons and times will play out. That's because you know the truth well enough. The day of the Lord will race onto the scene and surprise us like a thief in the night. People will be going about their business chanting, All is well, all is at peace. And in the next moment, ruin and destruction will suddenly seize them as the labor pains grip a woman about to give birth. For them, there will be no escape. My brothers and sisters, it will be different for you. You will not dwell in the darkness. So that day will not surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light. You are sons and daughters of the day. We are not created, created or... We are not created of night, of night, nor are we owned by darkness. So then, let's not give in to sleep or wander around in a stupor as some do. But let us stay awake and in control. So we're going to stop right there because then he's going to switch over. So tell me something that you that you saw there, and you have a King James over there too. So if you don't, do you have your King James with you today? Yeah. Okay, turn to chapter 5 there because I might um, ask you some questions about the reading of it in the King James Version. Um, but the what did you get out of it in there? Or did you, did, what did It'd you be a there? surprise for the people that aren't, uh, aren't children of light. That's what it sounds like to me. Right, so it's, it's, at least in this translation, it's making, and Paul's making it clear. He's saying, like, you don't need... A lot of instruction about how everything's going to play out, and sometimes when people teach about end times, um, they you know they go like, well, you know, it's just going to come like a thief in the night. <laughs> you know, that's the main right, isn't that the main way we usually hear? Yep. Like, and that's true. You better be prepared because for people who's not prepared, like Brother Tom just said, they it will be a total shock and a surprise. You know, because you know, be honest, and our fools in their hearts, they don't even believe there is God by our behavior, by our character, our lack of godly character it shows that it was in our hearts so it shows what we're really believing and not believing they're not believing he's coming back you know it's like um but he's coming back and so it says that people are going to be going about their business just like when he came the first time what right they were still doing whatever they were doing people were in charge of this and that to the point they didn't even recognize him when he was even here you know who he was you know treating him with such disrespect and ignorance but they knew they had a need, and they went to him to get that need met if they were wise uh, in their hearts. And so it says it's going to be, we were going to be running around, oh, every, there's not a problem. Everything's, you know, at peace. Uh, you want to read us some of that, King James? Or, From where? Uh, I think in verse 3, what does it say right there? For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. And go to four, because I wanted to see what that says. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. See, and that's what I wanted to really point out in there, because a lot of times they always say, it's gonna, Jesus is going to come back like a thief in the night, but it says it's, a believer is not going to be surprised right. when he comes back. So some kind of way we're going to, you know, of course he said there's many signs and things, you know, that, of the times that you're going to be able to see that it's about that time. Most of us believe that, you know, pretty much everything that needs to happen um, has pretty much happened. The setting and the stage is set for him to return anytime you know because we don't know everything because even jesus said nobody knows the day or the hour so if we were confidently trying to say the day and the hour then we would probably be wrong but it's like this to me these are times where it reminds me just like when he came the first time because everybody's all confidently sitting up acting like there's not a problem and then when there's a lot of even uh, evil and wrong things going on it, it causes us to have to choose a side and we it, you know fortunately a lot of people went out they fed people people have compassion they have prayer People trying to shut down, oh, what, you know, prayer and thoughts and prayers don't work. And it's like, yes, they do work because even if they didn't stop a person from committing a crime or harming people, it, it 
puts it into the minds of other people that it's a wrong thing to do and that other people are on the side of the people that were harmed or on the side of the people um, who are, you know, would be mistreated. So that's when you pray, even if you didn't believe a guy's going to intervene and do something, it shows other people that you, this is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And that we won't expect something to change. So thoughts and prayers do work because it changes us. Okay, and it shows that we have support for the right thing. And in that way, we would be able to see a lot of changes and things going on around us and having an expectation that things would change. So we wouldn't be wandering around in a stupor, right? Have y'all ever seen, like, Aspen's kind of in a stupor today mm -hmm. <laughs> because he stayed up with the teenagers called an all-nighter, right? And he's the number he's going like, yes, you know, I mean, he's not in a 24-7 stupor. He's a Christian person, but right now he's going just like that. And that's what... The Bible saying in the in, in the spirit, you know, don't be just walking around darker darker as people say, understanding that there's a day coming that Jesus is going to come back. We weren't created to walk around in the darkness. We were created to be cha uh, ages of change, first within ourselves and then uh, all around our, us. And so, so he said, don't be acting all like you, you know, you're in a stupor or something. You better stay awake and what else? In control. In control, right? You like just be moved by other people telling you do evil or not. That's why we're going to move into friendship after this. Uh, you know, what everybody else is doing, you know, like thinking like Jesus is not coming back. Don't be wandering around a stupor like you don't know any better than that. You know, like I was telling my students at school, you know better. That's one of the main things I tell them because I teach high school. I don't even be trying to break them like a wild horse or something. Most of the time I go like, look within yourself. You're old enough to know better and have some level of self-control, right, at some point. And for Christian people, that level of self-control uh, is based upon what God requires. Go ahead, Aspen. Go to verse uh, 7 for us. This is be good for you. You see, sleepers sleep through the night and drunkard and drunkards drink the might, the, might. the night. Okay. Away, but since we belong to the day, we should stay sober and in control, covered with the breastplate of faith and love, and a helmet of the hope of salvation. Keep going. For God has no, for God has not destined us, his chosen to. To face his wrath, but to be the hairs. hairs of salvation through our Lord Jesus, the anointing, mm -hmm. anointed, the, the liberating king who died for us. So regardless of whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him to so support one another. Turn it off. Finish reading that. Keep building. Keep building each other up as you have been doing. See, so that's where I think we, y'all see where the friendship part comes in when we were talking about those last days. Where did y'all get out of what Aspen just read? He's it? telling us to stay awake and in control. Right. Be sober. Right. And he talked about, what was something you talked before, Brother Tom? What, what did he about mention? About the, uh, the, um, the, um, uh, the You're the military person. Well, the brush plate, the, 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 the full, full armor, armor of God. God yes. <laughs> I, I was getting it. It's been a while, but yes. Right. And you know, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times in the Bible, it mentions things. If you don't, you can catch it that he's talking about different things. Um, they reiterate them throughout other scripture. It doesn't, you know, you know some people take it and say, like, well, we, we already learned about Ephesians 6. We already learned about the full armor of God. And they picked it up and they set it over there and whatever. But if you notice on these different, you know, we already talked about love. We talked about in Corinthians 13 and stuff like that. You know, it's like, no, it's all through, it runs all through there. Those principles run all through there and saying, you better have on that breastplate of faith. And that's what we're really, you know, being led to reiterate. And I believe most teachers and preachers around the country right now, even though faith is taught every week and every time you teach right now, it's like faith is what you're believing is going to make you be able to stand confidently in this world today and know what you really believe and what really is going to make you be successful and be able to survive no matter what happens, you and your family, you and your household, right? And all those that you're responsible for. And so he said, you keep, you stay covered with that breastplate of faith and love. Remember, love covers a multitude of sin, right? 
And then and the whole the whole gasoline, love your neighbor and as yourself and love God more than anything, right? Yeah. So here we go, reiterating, yeah, those powerful tools of that breastplate of faith, what you're believing, it's being sober and in control, standing like a mighty soldier or, you know, Marine, yeah. <laughs> whatever, you know, at my school, Navy. And uh, and it says, uh, and that helmet of the hope of salvation, because that's what we have is a hope, right? We can't, they said, no man has ever looked upon God and lived or whatever, you know, like been to heaven and stayed there and came down to be able to tell us what happened. Even Paul, when he went there, he said he saw things he couldn't even explain. So it's like, um, to keep it simple, it's like, he's like, so, say sober, I can't say it, stay, but I am sober, stay sober and in control, covered with that breastplate of faith. That's going to make you be able to stand strong because people, even when they're doing evil, they stand on what they're believing that they're, I know a guy that got in trouble all the time. And when I asked him about it, I said, why do you do it? He said, cause when you're doing it, you don't think you're going to get caught. Okay. So that's the same way with faith. Uh, when, why are you believing that? Because I'm believing that, you know, that it's going to work out in, on my behalf, in my favor, right? And so, uh, and then with the love, you know, we understood love to mean that we want the best for everybody. And, you know, love, then we talked about relationships. You might have to put up boundaries, right? And Jesus told us those steps on talking to people, trying to talk it out, you can't talk it out, get witnesses, can't get with, you know, the person, still, you still can't resolve it. You know, to go before the church, still can't resolve it. You got to put the boundaries up, right? Sometimes people just are not ready. Um, you can't just hang with them like you thought you could. They might not be able to hang with us like they thought they could because we got these habits, these issues that are very toxic, are immature, and we put up boundaries, but we always love. We still want the best. We still pray. We still hope, and hopefully people, come, you know, we come together in Christ. And he says, for God has not destined us to face his wrath, People who are in Jesus Christ are not are not going to hell. Okay, we'll still get judgment and we'll still answer for everything that we've done, but we will not be in the judgment of people who are going to face hell because we have our faith in Jesus Christ. So he's he's taking the responsibility to help cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we really are in Christ, and that's what the kicker is: is that you have to really be in Christ. You can't just go, Lord, Lord, and don't do what He says. You know, we don't go a wolf in sheep's clothing. We don't be fake or, you know, all those things like that, because he knows, he knows his people. And then it says, regardless of whether we're awake or asleep, we're going to live with them. And so we support one another. And that's what, uh, you know, we, if we don't have each other, what do we have? Right, Aspen? Like, mm -hmm. what do you have? You have to stand by yourself in a world where people might lie on you like they did Jesus. They might uh, betray you. They might, you know, like, what doesn't it make you feel better to know somebody's on your side? You know, we know God's on our side ultimately, but he's over and over. He tells us that we're supposed to be working together. We're supposed to be sticking together. We're supposed to be building each other up. Not tear, It should never be Christians tearing each other down. It should never be Christian people. It should never be even decent people. Some people say they're moral, whatever you want to call it yourself. But for Christian people, it is unacceptable to be the ones undermining and doing harm and wrong to each other. All right. Our job is to build each other up in doing right. Okay. So I guess I'll finish it. Starting at verse 12. It says, brothers and sisters, we ask you to show appreciation to those who are working hard among you and those who are your leaders as they guide and instruct you in the Lord. They are priceless. I mean, know that because people are taking time out and most people are not getting paid. I mean, some are blessed to get, you know, some kind of stipend because ministry does cost I mean, we have to pay. People say, you, you're supposed to do the gospel for free. Jesus did not do the gospel for free. He presented the gospel message. He didn't hold out a cup or something, but people supported his ministry. Read Luke 8. The women and all these people, they financed it because he still had to eat. He had to wear clothing. He still had to, you know, whatever they had to do that costs money. So ministry does cost money. You're not in it for money, but it does cost money. So people are taking up the effort. I'm a witness, it, you know, for anybody who speaks to people, works with people. Oh my goodness, it costs us so much to prepare. No, not necessarily money, but I mean, like in our efforts uh, to get up there, give everything that we have. You know, we still have bills to pay. We still have work to do in our homes. We still have families to take care of. We still have, you know, physical illnesses or we get tired. 
as leaders and stuff. So it's priceless. And please be appreciative, even of your parents, you know, or anyone else that takes the time out to teach us, to be with us, to be supportive of us. It's priceless. Most people are not willing to do it. As a matter of fact, you know, since I've been teaching it again, people are going like, I don't see how you can even do it because I would just be like, everybody get out. So, you know, being honest about it and then whatever you do, you know, to make life better for other people. Um, you know what it costs you every day to get up and have, and go do that. I ain't going to say have to do it. For some people, they have to do it. But some people, they do it because they're called to do it or they want to do it. Whatever job you're doing, um, it's, it's priceless that people want to help us, right? That's what I feel like. You know, military, all of them. You know, everybody everybody that wants to, to get up and tries to help us. But definitely, he said, you know, the Bible tells us first to the household of faith, right? So when people are instructing us about God giving us that hope, giving us that love, giving us those principles. He said, hey, ministry is priceless. So you should, should um, give honor and appreciation. It says show the appreciation. Some people do pastor appreciation. It says show appreciation to anybody that's instructing you in the Lord. So it's like ministry. So when you think about them, let it be with great love in your heart because of all the work they have done. Let peace live and reign among you. Brothers and sisters, we strongly advise you to scold the rebels who devote their lives to wreaking havoc, to encourage the downcast, to help the sick and weak, and to be patient with who? Some of them? All of them. All of them. <laughs> it says patient even with those wreaking havoc. The rebels. So I don't think he means like the ungodly. I think he means like people who just lose their way. What do y'all think? Yeah. I think he means that people lose their way, start, you know, going rogue, don't want to get up for, for Bible study. Our Sunday school don't want to get up for church. They know they're supposed to get up <laughs> this morning and they're rebelling, right? You just have patience with them. And then, of course, this, this even says in the, in the voice translation, people are wreaking havoc. You know, it's like, okay. All right, that's enough. You know, you put order in place, right? We don't just sit back and watch people cause a lot of problems or re definitely wreaking havoc. That's a lot. You know what I mean? Going trying to cause problems. Um, there's discipline in place, you know, in ministry, right? And in your family and in your community, hopefully. Um, and it says encourage the downcast. And sometimes the people wreaking havoc are the downcast. Sometimes unhappy people want to make everybody else miserable. So we got to, you know, assess the situation, uh, use discernment. That's why we have those fruit of the spirit, right? Yep. That patience, peace, love, self-control, all that help us to deal with one That's another. Robert, I know we do need them. And, uh, and encourage people, help the sick and the weak, right? People are doing mm -hmm. kind of a good job about that now, especially with COVID and stuff. People are really stepping in, having more empathy than I've ever seen. But the devil's still busy, man. The evil people still trying to undermine people. I got some people coming at me for no reason. And then it says to be patient with all of them, okay? That's the fruit of the Spirit. I know it's going to take it a lot of times. That's one of the big ones. And it says, make sure no one returns evil for evil, but always pursue what is good as it affects one another in the church, um, but also all people. So they watch how we learn how to resolve our our issues. Like we've been talking about, Jesus gave us that formula to not even be in the council of the ungodly. Don't hang with ungodly people. You can be friendly to them, but just what does darkness and light have in common? All it's going to do is, is reflect back on us or our witness. It looks like we don't have a problem with that, you know, and you know, let the spirit be your guide. But uh, definitely it says, you know, you don't, if you weren't, I feel like if you weren't hanging with a bunch of people that's always doing evil, you wouldn't have that problem to really deal with. But I know that sometimes we have to live with people our, uh, our family uh, members and things like that. And that's why we have to have that peace. And we try to continue to do what's right, even if somebody else is doing what's wrong. And hopefully we're able to put up boundaries to protect ourselves. And there are laws and things in place too. So pursue what's good because everybody's watching how we resolve our issues. Um, it says, celebrate always. I'm in verse 16. Pray constantly and give thanks to God no matter what circumstances you find yourself in. Because this is God's will for all of you in Jesus Christ, the anointed. And so we always give God thanks. There's always something to be thankful for. It's not just a little cliche. There's always, even if you're sitting there and you're crying right in your house, you're crying, you just ate breakfast or dinner, you're crying, but you got your health. Uh, you got to keep your hope, like it told us earlier, that everything's going to work out. And it always has, as you wouldn't be sitting there. So it will, you know. Um, don't suppress the Spirit, right? Because the Holy Spirit is the one guiding us. The Holy Spirit is the one guiding us this far. And don't downplay prophecies. Wow. So some I, I would say that, how's that reading King James right now? Where it says, don't downplay prophecies at verse 20. 
the despise not prophesying. <laughs> okay, so I think he's, there's, if somebody tells you some truth about what God has spoken, mm -hmm. don't downplay it. I, you know, I'm the person mm -hmm. like, we don't believe what we're praying for. We got to believe what we're praying for. Despise not. You know, so if somebody's telling us something, you know, let's, let, you know, let's make, make sure they, they are of God, but hey, Listen to a word from God. Take a close look at everything. Test it. Then cling to what is good. Put away every form of evil. So now may the God of peace make you his own completely and set you apart from the rest. May your spirit, soul, and body be preserved. Keep intact and wholly free from any sort of blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus, the anointed. For the God who calls you is what? In verse 24. For the who God. also will do it? No. Okay, but what does it say on ours? For the God who calls you is faithful, and he could be trusted to make it so. So, yes, he will do it. Um, he's faithful, and he can be trusted to make it so. That's our um, voice translation. And okay, brothers and sisters, you. we ask you to pray for us. Greet one another warmly with a holy kiss. And here is my charge to you before the Lord. Have this letter read to all our brothers and sisters in the faith. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, God's anointed, be with all of you. And our commentary says, Paul knows the healing power of touch. When members of a loving community embrace, the hardest days are easier and no one feels alone. So somebody was saying that some preacher was using that to have everybody get to kiss the young women. <laughs> Greet them with a holy kiss. Sometimes I laugh, y'all, because it's just so ridiculous. Don't think I don't take it seriously. I mean, but it's, it's so, some things are so ridiculous. And it's like, please don't go for that. You know, you know what's unwholesome and what's holy in a hug or kissing. And with COVID, most people are not holy, hugging and kissing like that anyway. They're like turning their face. So there's a such thing as a holy hug or a holy handshake um, that doesn't have any kind of lasciviousness to it, right? Or unholiness to it. But as we end this lesson, it's mostly just telling us, what did y'all get out of it? What, what's he mostly telling? What was Paul mostly telling them? Because I know I'm talking fast to, for time's sake, but people can read it themselves. But what did y'all get out of it, of this lesson? If you're a children, a child of light, then it shouldn't surprise you when Jesus returns. You should be awake, sober, and in control. Right, and how do you say about treating each other, Aspen? Respectfully. No. Um. Yeah, that's one part. And what else was it saying? Um. It's saying appreciate your leaders and people that instruct you in the Lord. It was saying build people uh, down, tear people down, or build them what? Build them up. Yeah, build them up. You know, he said, as you have been doing, so he encouraged them. And he said that God's going to make you his own completely and set you apart from the rest. And he's going to preserve us and keep us intact because he is what? What we've been studying. He is, he is faith, faithful. 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 He's faithful. So it's not like we're depending on ourselves or each other so much as we were depending on God because he is faithful to keep his promises. And that's we're going to move from this, I think, to next week to friendship because people who really are our friends and if we're really friends to people. People always like to say, if you're going to be a friend, then be show yourself friendly then the Bible is basically telling us, look, the time, the end of time is coming. Jesus is coming back, and it's going to be a time that believers are going to be aware of, that that time is coming. So in that day, we're going to have to stand firm in our full armor, having patience with one another, but being able to build each other up. And then building each other up also means we discipline each other. We hold each other accountable because we want each other to see Jesus. We want each other to be in heaven. We want each other to meet our calling. We want each other to enjoy life. Right. And he's saying, so, yeah, this is not going to surprise you as long as you're aware. Keep your eyes open. Don't fall like we were talking about in the sower and the seed. Don't find yourself falling off the path. And the way, one of the big ways we'll do that is if we all stick together and show each other love and compassion and um, unity, because then God will do the rest. And that's a mm -hmm. quick synopsis of why we would move to friendship from there, because in that unity in Christ, then it should never be Christians hurting Christians. <laughs> okay. Now, so we're going to do our offering and we're going to end our song today is How Great Is Our God. So we're going to do one verse of that, I think, and then we're going to move on. Um, the splendor of a king. I'll sing the verse for y'all. We're clothed in majesty. Let all the world rejoice. Let all the world rejoice. He wraps himself in light. 
and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And I will see how great, how great is our God. Y'all, that's, that's when I bless the offering and we close out. You want to bless the offering? Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this offering. We thank you, Lord, for those who had to give and those who couldn't give. Lord, let it be used in the fulfillment and uh, furthering of your ministry here on earth. In Jesus' blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And we know I'm kind of talking fast when we're going through these lessons, so go back to First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll do a little bit of a review next week, so make sure you uh, catch up with us next week, and uh, perhaps you'll go to YouTube uh, to Minister to Tina and, and subscribe. Go to Facebook, Minister to Tina, Pastor to Tina, to Tina Hampton Hurt, Meditating Life Center, and catch up on our lessons. And we'll see you next week, God willing, and you stay blessed. Woo